God is the horse, you said to me. I said hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, that's what the fierce sense of weather calls horse mind. A horse mind is when you follow the emotion. He's talking about that. That was the in Buddhism image of a monkey mind. But the horse mind, it wants to go to the side of the road and eat food. It wants to go its own way. And so, therefore, you have to bridle the horse to control it so that it stays on the right path. So that's really what this practice is, you know. So, um, so go for it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, ready. Well, actually, more than teach, we're sure. going to experience it. Sure. We want to sure. feel it. Okay, and Correct. that's okay. So let's so let's close our eyes, sit straight up. Hands on your knees or thighs. Get as comfortable as you can. And we'll, and, we'll, and we'll start with some breathing exercises. And then I'll guide you in some meditation and things to think about. Okay, so let's uh, sit straight up. And when you inhale, use your stomach, your chest, and your head. So on the count of three, let's inhale. On, a, on the count of for a count of four, hold it in your head for a count of four, and then exhale for a count of six. And don't get caught up in the counting too much. Just get into a nice little rhythm of a slow inhale, slow hold, slow exhale, or a slower exhale. So one, two, three, inhale for a count of four. Hold it for a count of four. And exhale for a count of six. Again, inhale for four. Hold it. And exhale. Again, inhale. Hold it. Okay, inhale for a count of four. Hold it. And exhale for a count of six. Now we're going to breathe chedva, which means joy. I want to slowly inhale for ches, a count of eight. Hold it for Dalid, four. Exhale, Vav for six. And if you can, hold the exhale for five. Hey. Again, inhale, eight. Hold it for four. Exhale for six. And hold for five. Again, when you inhale, fill up your stomach, your chest, all the way to the top of your head. Hold it. And slowly exhale out your mouth like you're blowing out a straw. And relax for five. Now when you inhale for eight, I want you to imagine Shema Yisrael. Eight letters. Hold it for Hashem's four-letter name. Exhale, Elokeinu, six letters. And hold for Hashem Echad, Hashem, four letter name, plus Echad, which is one. Again, inhale, eight, Shema Yisrael. Hold it for Hashem. Exhale, Elokeinu. And hold Hashem Echad. 
stay in this rhythm as I start to speak and guide you. Inhale, hold, exhale, hold. Inhale slowly, hold it, exhale slowly, hold it. <coughs> Ain od Milvado. There's nothing that exists besides God. Since God created the world many years ago, up until this very moment in time, Hashem has not changed at all. But if nothing exists besides God, who are you, who am I, and what is this world that we're living in? When Hashem created the world, He had a plan, a purpose, to create a physical world where his existence could be denied by the creatures who live here. But Hashem has never changed. And since creation, he constantly recreates the world every moment. If God was not thinking about every aspect of creation at every moment of time, it would not exist. And that includes me and you. So Hashem is always thinking about you. Now many years ago, <coughs> Your soul was in Shemayim with all the other souls and it accepted a mission to go back down to this world and inhabit your body at this time in this place. This is a mission you accepted and that's who you really are. You are a piece of Hashem put into this world to make it better, to complete creation as a partner with Hashem. That's who you really are. There's no greater mission in life than that. And when you were born, it was like God was telling you the world cannot exist without you. If that's who we really are, then how is it possible that we forget and we go unconscious and think that we're just simple beings in this world at the mercy of what happens to us. How does that happen? Well, when you're a young child, until you're 12 or 13, Your Yates or Tove hasn't even come into your body yet. And you're very, very suggestible 
to what your parents say, what your teachers say, what your friends say, and what the world tells you. And those messages are coming from people who are also just struggling through life to figure it out too. And sometimes those messages are not true. So let's go back, imagine you go back in time to a place that you know very well from your childhood, a place where you spent time alone. It could be your bedroom or anywhere. I want you to put yourself back into that place as that child. I want you to scan the room or the place if it's outside and imagine you see all the details that you know so well from being there for so much time as a child. You can see the paint color on the walls, you can smell the carpet, you can see the doorknob, you can know what's hanging on the walls. You've seen it so many times. It's imprinted in your mind. Now I want you to imagine your your current self and you go visit this child and it's just the two of you. The child gives you permission to be in that place with you and the child knows who you are. And you look into each other's eyes. No words have to be spoken because this is you. But that child is looking for some encouragement acceptance, love, and attention. And that child wants you to tell him or her the truth. Who are they? What is their mission? Why are they here in this world? Spend a moment with this child and remind the child that it has a soul that came from heaven that's been here before and now it's here again to finish its job. And that this mission is a mission from God, the king of the whole universe. Now with permission from the child, give the child give the child a hug. Tell the child you love him or her. And slowly leave that place. Come back to the present moment. And know in your heart that the past is over. It's not here anymore. There's no need to hold on to any emotions from the past. That only keeps us anchored in in the past and living in the past. Because the only thing that is happening is this very moment. Life is a moment. Life is a series of moments. There's no past and no future. There's only right now. What happened in the past is okay to remember, but only as it gives you wisdom to who you are right now. No emotion to the past. You're recreated new every day. 
Well, let's now imagine we go into the future. <coughs> to a future event that you long and dream <coughs> for. It could be personal to you or someone you love. I want you to imagine that event happening. And I want you to put yourself in a scene of this event. Who's there with you? What are you wearing? What are the people there wearing? How big are the smiles on everyone's faces? It's a moment you've dreamed of for a long time. It's joyous. And everyone's happy. But now, let's imagine even a greater event. Let's imagine that Mashiach has come and we're all going to Israel together. So on the count of three, I want you to imagine that we're sitting in these chairs in a circle and on a count of three, we fly into the air with just our bodies. And we go all the way to Israel. One, two, three. Blast off. <laughs> And now we gently land right at the hotel in the middle of the day. What do you see? What do you feel? Who do you see? You're there as the best version of yourself with joy and gratitude in your heart, feeling it in your body. And you pick a stone on the hotel wall and as soon as you touch it and feel the heat of the stone, the stone moves and creates a tunnel and we all follow through. And then we come to the end of the tunnel and we're in the courtyard of the third base of Nidash. Can you imagine standing in the courtyard with all the other Jewish people dancing and smiling and singing this is the moment we've all been waiting for. And everyone's there. All our friends and family from the past and the present are there. Healthy, wealthy, and now we clearly understand exactly why everything happened the way it did through all of history. It all becomes clear now. All the pain and suffering is washed away. And now we get it. And it's a relief. And it's joyous. Then we wait online to greet Mashiach. 
And it's a long line of a lot of Jewish people. But it's the line that we're not upset we're waiting on. We'll wait as long as it takes. Because every moment keeps getting better and better and better. And then it's your turn and you're face to face with Mashiach and he looks you straight in the eye and he says to you, thank you. Thank you for doing your share to get us here today. Because without you, we wouldn't have gotten here. this moment now that you're experiencing? Can you memorize the emotions of joy or gratitude or relief? Because this is why we're here and this is what we're working towards and we're getting there. So when you wake up and you go about your life today, tomorrow, in an hour, and you go unconscious, like the, all, we, all, we all do, and we forget who we really are, and something happens that would normally trigger you to get worried, or sad, or angry, or jealous, Take a moment and pause and say, change, that's not who I really am. I can't choose what happens to me, but I can choose how to react. This is just a test. And one day I'll see the good in this situation too, even if I don't see it now. That's our avoda. That's what we're here for. And this is the final frontier to revealing Mashiach in the world is for each of us to do this the best we can. And the more you do it, the sooner you'll see the good in that test to the point when Mashiach comes, it will be revealed. And let's hope that day comes today.